God, you alone are worthy of all praise and honor, and we are so grateful for the work that you have done through your son on the cross. Lord, thank you for sending him. Thank you for placing on him the just punishment and wrath that all who have repented of their sins and placed faith in you deserve. And Lord, thank you for raising him that he might conquer death, that we no longer need to fear death because we have an eternal hope in you. We thank you for these things. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. If you do not have a Bible, please raise your hand and the men coming down the aisles will get one to you. That is for you to keep if you need one. Uh, or for you to use if you simply forgot to bring one this morning. And you can open up your Bible to the book of Colossians. We're going to look at a few verses, the first few verses of Colossians chapter 3 this morning. This is the time in our service where we take the Lord's table. And Jesus, just prior to his betrayal in the garden, was eager to have the Passover feast with his disciples. And during this feast, there was specific instruction that he gave to his disciples. He took bread and wine, and after giving thanks, he broke the bread and gave it to his disciples and instructed them to eat it in remembrance of him, particularly in remembrance of his body that would soon be broken. And he took the wine, which signified his blood that would soon be shed, and instructed them to drink it in remembrance Both the bread and the cup are symbols to aid the believer in remembering the most horrific and the most consequential event that has ever taken place in all of history, and that is the death of the Son of God, the death of Jesus on the cross. And as we take communion together this morning and we seek to remember our Savior, let's look together at Colossians 3, verses 1 through 4. Starting in verse 1, it says, Therefore... If you have been raised up with Christ, keep seeking the things above where Christ is. Seated at the right hand of God, set your mind on the things above, not on the things that are on the earth. For you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. To be saved, one must know Jesus, and in our salvation, we must ever keep Jesus before us. And this morning, as we partake of the Lord's table together, we're actually going to seek to walk in obedience to this text to set our mind on things above. Paul's instruction is for the one who has been raised up with Christ, that is, saved by Jesus, the one who has repented of their sins place their hope in Jesus, or as Paul says in chapter 1, the one who has been transferred from the domain of darkness to Jesus' kingdom, that one is to keep seeking the things above. That one is to set their mind on the things above, and in contrast, he says, don't set your mind on the things of the earth. And if you have been raised up with Christ, live like it. And one of your greatest aids in living in accordance with the work that Jesus has accomplished in the gospel is to set your mind on things above, to seek things above, heavenly things. The Christian is to let their preoccupation with heaven govern their earthly responses. And in order to reach the world for Jesus, we actually need to separate ourselves from the world first. Our most usefulness for our Savior will come when we are preoccupied with the one who reigns in heaven. That is Jesus Christ. See, Paul's point here is not simply to think about streets of gold and things such as that, but to think about heaven, think about things above, because that is where Jesus is. And for the one who has been redeemed by the blood of Jesus, for the one who has been forgiven of their sins and trespasses and reconciled to God, it is only appropriate that that one's mind is stayed on the Son of God, Jesus Christ. Instructions like taking thoughts captive, renewing your mind, setting your mind on things above, and even Jesus' instruction regarding the Lord's table to do this in remembrance of me all demonstrate the importance to think rightly. 
to think rightly, to think about the gospel. The reason Paul instructs the Colossians here to seek things above and to set their minds there is because that is where Jesus is. And this is only fitting considering what Paul says in verses 3 and 4. Look again. He says, for you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. Why would we want to set our minds on anything else? And then verse 4, when Christ, who is our life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. If you are a believer, you have died. And you have also been raised up with him with Jesus, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God, and you have eternity to look forward to where you will one day receive a glorified body able to enjoy and worship and serve God without sin for all eternity. Oh, what God would be pleased to do with those who set their minds on these realities and pursue what is of eternal value, which is giving glory to Jesus through humble obedience to its instruction and faithful proclamation of his message. The men are going to come in a moment, and they're going to pass out a cracker and a small cup of juice. And these are, as I stated previously, these are symbols for us to remember Jesus. And as they do this, I encourage you to occupy your thoughts with things above. Remember Jesus' body that was broken. Remember his blood that was shed. Remember what you deserve in your sin and rebellion, enmity with God. Remember what you have been given in Christ, eternal riches that no one can ever take away. That rust cannot touch, that moth cannot destroy. Remember the fact that his death and resurrection purchased for you salvation as a gift, not by merit of your own. You're no longer under sin's burden or condemnation, trying to pull yourself out of the grave, which is an impossible task, but you have been raised up by the work of your Savior as a free gift of grace through faith. And in response to the great work of Jesus, now where there is known sin in your life, begin the process of repentance by confessing it as such to the Lord. And remember also that as we take the bread and the cup, we are proclaiming Christ's death and we are anticipating his return. We are to long for these things. If you do not know Jesus, if the things of which I've spoken are not true for you, you haven't been raised up with Christ, then I would plead with you, repent. Live under the condemnation of your sin no longer. Turn to Jesus in faith and repentance. Trust in him. And if you would do that, we would love that. That would be the the best for us this morning. And, And actually, that would be the best for you this morning. And if that's true for you if, you, if you do that, then take the bread and the cup and remember Jesus, his death with us. And if you refuse to do that still, then we'd ask that you'd let these things, the, the bread and the, and the juice, just pass by. As this is a time for believers to remember their Savior. As you're prepared, the men are going to come. You can take communion on your own, and then I will pray. Men, please come and